delivering effective pinpoint strikes on strategic objects and logistics routes located directly on the territory of the occupying country, the Russian Federation could significantly reduce the effectiveness of enemy troops and have a dramatic impact on the overall course of military operations. ISW analysts write, by increasing precision strikes with Western weapons, broader operational pressure will be created on the Russian armed forces, which could go far beyond the targeted destruction of ammunition stockpiles and logistics facilities. They emphasize, the American Institute for the Study of War also expressed the opinion that strikes on ammunition depots located on Russian territory could force the enemy's military command to make difficult decisions and hastily disperse support systems and technical support within the territory under its control. In turn, the lifting of restrictions on the use of foreign systems on Russian territory for the Ukrainian Defense Forces will allow the Ukrainian Armed Forces and other Ukrainian units to exploit the vulnerabilities of the aggressor country. Strikes on targets in the Russian Federation could affect offensive operations in the entire theater of military operations in Ukraine, said analysts at the Institute for the Study of War. Recently, a Russian artillery depot in the Tver region was destroyed. A Russian managed to film the moment of the strike on the artillery depot of the Russian armed forces near the city of Toropets, Tver region. Judging by it, a missile was used in the attack. An eyewitness filmed one of the repeated flights over the warehouse. The whistling sound of a rocket operating on a jet engine is clearly audible. It is also obvious that the weapon had a fairly high speed, which is not typically for a drone. There is a reason to believe that the new Ukrainian drone missile, Palyanitsia, could have been used in the strike. At the end of August 2024, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky reported its first successful use against a target of the Russian armed forces. The technical characteristics of the new product are kept secret, but it is known that it is equipped with a turbojet engine. Most likely, the Ukrainian Defense Forces used combined tactics when striking the warehouse in Toropets, using several types of weapons simultaneously, including attack drones. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen inspected a generator that had been provided to the bloc to Ukraine as winter approaches. That happened during her visit to Kiev on Friday. Von der Leyen arrived in Ukraine earlier in the day focused on helping the country to repair and reconnect its war-damaged electricity grid and boost its heating capacity as winter approaches. Around half of Ukraine's energy infrastructure has been destroyed during its war with Russia, and rolling electricity blackouts leave parts of the east in darkness for four hours at a time. Von der Leyen said it was as though all of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia had lost electricity. Meanwhile, winter is approaching. The main aim is to help Ukraine decentralize its power grid, and to become less reliant on the big power stations that make easier targets for Russian forces. Around 260 missiles rained down in a major attack on energy infrastructure late last month. The Europeans have already sent more 10,000 generators and transformers, and they're supplying small and more mobile gas turbines too. These types of electricity providing equipment is harder to hit and easier to repair. Ukraine's winter runs from late October through March, with January and February the toughest months. The Europeans hope to help supply around 25% of the 17 gigawatts of power that the country is likely to need this winter. One aim of the EU assistance is to provide an incentive for people to stay in Ukraine. Some 4 million people have fled since the war began in February 2022, often to Poland and other neighboring countries. The EU is providing assistance, such as short-term help to find a place to stay, jobs or education. But recently the number of people leaving has climbed. The Commission, the EU's powerful executive branch, estimates that 10,000 more people are applying for help each week.